that was actually shot with the Moza Mini Me, which is this gimbal just here, a gimbal designed for cell phones. There's so many gimbals out there right now. There's larger ones designed for DSLR cameras. There's even bigger one designed for cinema style cameras. There's smaller ones, more compact budget ones designed for traveling, for things like your mirrorless camera. So there's so many out there, but the one thing that makes these more challenging to travel with is the fact, and especially if you're just getting started, you need to have a camera or you need to carry and pack a camera with you. And that just takes up more space. Also, if you're just starting, you might not have a camera. I have always been a fan of filming on my phone. I don't have to carry around another camera with me, or if you're new and you don't have a camera, I can almost guarantee that you have a cell phone. For quick access, for a camera that shoots 4K, or even 1080p 120 frames a second, and something that's always on you, and I mean always, including when you're sat on the toilet. And yes, I know you do it too. So if you don't have anything else with you and you just have your phone, you can still get pretty good video. Combine that with the gimbal and you get something like I showed you at the start. It's not bad for filming general stuff. It's definitely not the same as if you're using a high-end camera like the Sony a7 III, but it's still usable video and you can sometimes throw some of those shots into videos and even I do it as well. Sometimes I use my phone to throw in little clips of videos and when I'm making these kinds of things and I bet you can't even tell. So the Moza Mini Me is actually a pretty good gimbal for if you want to travel and you don't want to have to take your big camera. Or if you're just looking at getting started and doing the whole world of video with your phone, this is a good option to go with it. Right under $100, literally $99.99. And it's very compact and it's easy to travel with. I'm not going to be comparing it to any of the other phone gimbals that I've talked about before. This has been done a million times by 55,000 other people, so I'm not doing that. I'm just gonna tell you what I like about it and what I don't like, and that's pretty much it. Now, while I'm talking about it, I'm gonna plant this right here, and hopefully it doesn't focus on this and not my face. Design-wise, it's pretty solid. It comes with the tripod legs, which I would honestly say are a necessity for any gimbal now, big or small. You need it on there. It just makes it easier to balance. You're not fumbling around trying to hold this upright while you're balancing your phone or your camera on here. It just holds it upright. It also means when you're not using it, you can stand it up like this and not have to worry. It's made of plastic. Silky smooth to the touch, but you'd assume by looking at it, and because hearing from me it's plastic that's not that high quality, but it's that weird plastic where it kind of does feel like it's made very well, even though it's made of plastic. It's decent, doesn't feel cheap. It balances pretty much the same as every other phone gimbal out there. I'm using an iPhone XS right now, but I did use an iPhone 10 before. They're the same phone really, so it doesn't change the way this works. But anyway, using an iPhone XS, it fits in here just fine. You have two things to control to get this balanced. One of which is on the back here, and that's controlling the axis so that if the phone tilts this way, you push it this way so it balances like that. The other one is making sure that it doesn't fall this way. So if it does, like that, you literally just move your phone the opposite direction. So you're, you're kind of countering any opposite movement. So now it's going to the right, which means I need to push it to the left. Now it's going to the left, so it needs a little bit to the right. And that's it, there you go, it's done, it's balanced. Now you would actually think that, because the iPhone camera is right here, it's actually picking up part of the gimbal here. It does genuinely look like it would pick that up. Let me be the first to tell you that it doesn't. It films everything completely without having to see this part of the gimbal. That being said, if you have a wide angle lens or one of the moment lenses and it makes your image a little bit wider, I can almost guarantee you that you will pick up parts of the gimbal because the camera is right here and the gimbal is right here. So bear that in mind. You can also use this in portrait mode. You just untighten this and then it becomes in portrait mode. Really, the only excuse for you to use portrait mode is if you're using Instagram video. For anything else, you're a bad person. You probably know what this symbol means. That one just there, that's what I was pointing at. It has wireless charging. So if your phone's connected to this, you can wirelessly charge your phone as you're filming, which is really useful. That's probably my favorite feature about this, to be honest, because your battery level does go down quite quickly when you're filming and this stops it from doing that. It's actually pretty genius as well to think about it because your phone's already gonna be there. That's the only way that this will work. So why not just put a wireless charger behind it? Good job, Gudson, like that. It has all the regular modes you expect with any other gimbal. Follow mode, which is where it follows whichever angle you point it in. 
That's probably the most common one you're gonna to use, to be honest. It has lock mode where you can force it into one position. You can then control it with the joystick to stay in that position wherever you want it. And then the gimbal doesn't move around. It just stays in that direction. That's one I like to use quite a bit as well. It has selfie mode, so you can do like so. Film yourself if you want to, vlog, so using selfie mode. And it also includes the more and more popular inception mode. So if you wanna spin your phone around, albeit quite slow, you can do the inception mode and get those trippy spinny shots if you wanna do that kind of thing. So it has that too. And it does have, of course, a joystick on there. So if you wanna just control it and point at things and screw the gimbal, I wanna do the joystick movements myself, you can do that too. On the back, it does have a screw mount as well. So you could screw something in, maybe a mic if you wanted to get better sound from your phone or anything else really that fits into a screw mount that you wanted to put on it. I can film and then have a nice refreshing beverage. It doesn't work that well for doing this. There is an app that you can install on your phone and it connects to the gimbal via Bluetooth. I personally don't like using those kinds of apps. I always find them not the greatest. I haven't seen the best reviews about this app, so I just opted not to use it. I just shoot with the stock camera app on the phone and use that and control the settings myself. Other than that, it's generally not a bad phone gimbal. The first one they sent me did have some problems. I'm pretty sure they had programmed it to be a weapon. This thing was just spinning around frantically, madly, and you could definitely use it to harm somebody. But needless to say, the second one they sent me does work just fine. So if you're in the market for a phone gimbal, maybe you're just getting started with video and all you've got is a phone, or if you want something that's a little bit more compact, travel friendly, you don't wanna to have to take your big camera around with you, then the Moza Mini Me really isn't a bad option. So this has been the Moza Mini Me. Uh, it's one I'm probably gonna be using to do some traveling with next month going to England and take this with me as a portable option because I'm not gonna take a big gimbal with me. So I'll take this, try it out, see what I can do with it there and maybe I'll post something else in the next month or so. Other than that, if you wanna pick it up, I'll put the link down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. See you later. So this has been the Moza Mini Me. I have been me and see you later. Oh God. And in case you did want a quick comparison between the Mini Me and the DJI Osmo Mobile 2, Side by side, they're nearly the same size. This one's gray, this one's black. See you later.